Hey everyone, Ben here. Uh, I, I realize I never really have the camera pointed on me, so I decided to talk to you face to face. Uh, it's the spring seed, seed starting day today, so I want to show you what I'm growing. Um, oop, I'm covering up the camera here. All right, I'm an amateur. Um, so I'm growing some herbs, some vegetables, some perennials, some annuals, um, and I don't have all the seeds yet that I'm gonna, that I'm going to grow this year, but I want to show you what I have so far. A lot of these seeds came from uh, eBay. I bought them uh, from a company called Seeds for Every Season. Um, and that, those are the ones that come in little packets here. Um, and the, it's a really good deal. It's um, buy two, get one free. Um, and uh, I think it's free shipping as well, um, or, or reduced shipping. It's not, not very expensive if there is shipping. Um, and these seed packets, most of them cost less than $2. Um, and I got some really unique varieties here. So uh, first off, we have the, this heliotrope. I don't grow a lot of flowers, but I, I, I smelled these heliotropes at a garden a few years back. Uh, this variety, it's called heliotrope marine. Um, and it says it's perennial in zones nine to 10. Um, so I don't think I would be able to grow it as a perennial here in zone seven A. But the thing about these flowers is not only are they um, good pollinator attractors, but they smell exactly like uh, vanilla. Like they smell like you know, the best vanilla you've ever smelled. There's not really anything that I know that you can do with it necessarily food-wise. I don't know if they're edible. Um, my guess is that they're not, but um, they're really nice to have around. Uh, another flower, we've got German chamomile. It's one of my favorite things for tea. Um, and, uh, you know, you harvest the, the little flower heads um, for, for your tea, and I can never have enough of that, so I've got tons of seeds. Uh, lead plant, which is I'm just learning about now. Um, apparently, it's really useful to have around as a um, kind of like a, a nutrient accumulating plant that you can use for um, composting and mulch and it has flowers for uh, pollinators. Uh, there's not really an edi edible parts to the lead plant that I know of, um, but it's really uh, one of those things that you, you plant once and you're gonna have around for a while. It's perennial up to, up to zone two. Um, and so uh, I don't have it yet, so I decided to order it really cheap. Got some seeds. I don't think I'll have to order it again after I, I plant these. Borage, uh, again, I just like the flowers, really good uh, for, for bees. Um, this interesting one here is called bird, Bird's Foot Trefoil or Trefoil. And um, I read a book recently, it was uh, Paradise Lot by Eric Tonsmeyer. And um, he mentions this, and I've heard it before. And the nice thing about it is it's perennial, it's um, native and it's a really great ground cover. It only grows, um, it says here, six to 16 inches tall. Um, and a lot of times it's less, it's, uh, you know, closer to the six as opposed to the 16. Um, so I'm hoping that I can uh, plant these around. Um, usually you would direct seed them. I might have to resort to using the seedling pots because um, a lot of the places I'll be seeding them have wood chips mulch uh, already there. So the seeds probably wouldn't like being planted into that. Just regular parsley, I realized that parsley is one of my favorite uh, culinary herbs, uh, especially to eat raw. For some reason, I just really like eating it. Uh, kale, of course, because it's expensive to buy. Pickling cucumbers. Um, the cool ones here, um, I'm going to be doing a breeding project um, that I'm going to definitely do a series of videos on of uh, holy basil. So I've got two varieties. This one's uh, hairy lemon basil, uh, osimum canum. And um, typically uses cooking, uh, cooking basil, as opposed to the holy uh, caprao basil. And uh, this one is this one, I don't know if this has a uh, it's, another, it's another awesome species, but it doesn't say it on there. But it's another holy basil variety. And I have four other ones coming, so I'm going to have a total of six different. Um, I don't know if this one's holy, but six different basils. Um, not like the typical basil that you'd, you'd get for uh, Italian recipes, but um, the regular holy basil that I've grown in the past, um, it's really fragrant. It lasts as a tea, a dried tea for a really long time. It's medicinal, it helps to relax. It's expensive to buy um, and easy to grow. So I'm gonna be doing a breeding project to try to uh, identify some, or maybe even create some species that are hardy here. Um, and I'll do another video on that. Um, so that's all today. That This is the potting mix I'm using. I'm kind of experimenting. I bought bulk um, perlite, bulk peat moss, and bulk uh, vermiculite as well. So it's kind of a two parts peat moss, one part perlite, one part vermiculite. So we're gonna see how that works. I put a little bit of worm castings in 
as well, sifted out from my compost pile. So it should be should be pretty good uh, for these seeds. So um, I'm gonna stick these on a heating mat, throw the cover on, and uh, I'll check back uh, in a month or so or whenever I decide to plant these out. It's uh, late February now, so that's a good good head start. Okay, talk to you later. Bye bye.